Over 400 years ago, a poet living in an unfamiliar land began telling a story. It was a dangerous story from a lost world full of sea monsters, dragons, wizards, enchanters, and dark lairs hidden under the earth and below the waters. Yet it was also a world touched with love, both sacred and forbidden. Fair reader, join the quest. Help us revive a forgotten epic poem. Help us revive Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. This journey began in a frigid classroom with a cracked window glass on a cold and windy morning. How many magical occurrences have begun in just such a room? Thousands, I suppose. Classrooms are dangerous places. I was teaching Book One, Canto One of the Fairy Queen to ninth graders and was frustrated, not only to be awake with adult responsibilities at 8 a.m., but also to realize that bright students who could easily unlock Shakespeare or Marlowe struggled to crack Spencer's diction. This struggle was understandable, of course. Spencer often chose language that was even more archaic than that of his contemporaries. We plodded through the poem, line by line, two bookish girls thrilled with the labors of etymology, five wriggly boys strategizing a mutiny, and the rest of the class zoned out entirely, glistening lines of sleep drool trickling down their chins. My curriculum map commanded me to teach a canto of Spencer with the goal of studying Elizabethan language, the very worst of terrible reasons for studying Spencer. The Fairy Queen is not standard Elizabethan diction, and while obscure interpretation tends to delight a battling of scrunched-up scholars who never fail to spell camaraderie correctly in the first go, and who sit in musty rooms stacked to the ceiling with books shouting, A battling is a group of ducks! Such meticulous study is not quite as enjoyable for most 14-year-olds. So I stayed up all night that night, carefully rendering each phrase of Canto I in language my students could understand. When I showed up the next morning, I took a deep breath and read aloud the exact same story they had encountered the day before. The students were transfixed. What is this? What comes next? How do we get more of it? So, thanks to big dream supporters Steve Smith and Jonathan Morris, I stepped away from my beloved classroom for four years to sit in a university library, pouring through research, to offer a text-faithful, generously footnoted, illustrated prose rendering of Spencer's epic poem to the world. Before anyone gets fussy, nothing can replace the original text, of course. Prose can never accomplish the complexities of poetry. Yet, hardly anyone has read the original text in its entirety, and I don't see that changing any time soon. So, in the spirit of an educator, I slowly integrate more of Spencer's original language over the course of six books and one fragment. Hopefully, by the time you finish my rendering, you will feel confident enough to graduate to a formal, annotated copy of the 1590s text, preferably A.C. Hamilton's. Elizabethan scholars have also joined the endeavor, offering oversight. Then, wonder of wonders, acclaimed fantasy artist Justin Gerard jumped in to help. He slowly, patiently listened to the text, then he created nearly 80 images, bringing Spencer's work to life. Not in 400 years has this text received such artistic focus. Upon a time, Tolkien revived interest in Beowulf, George Smith first offered us Gilgamesh. Constance Garnett introduced Western readers to the glories of Russian literature. C.E. Wilbur gave us Hugo's Les Mis. Such stories have become part of the warp and weft of our culture because someone cared enough to make them more accessible. The Fairy Queen is just as rich as these old tales. Spencer's 36,000 lines of adventure inspired writers like William Wordsworth, John Milton, Alfred Lloyd Tennyson, John Keats, George MacDonald, L. Frank Baum, and C.S. Lewis. 
Now, this grand tale is becoming accessible to a whole new generation. So stand arm in arm with us as we work to share one of the greatest works of human literature. The stories of Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen have moved readers and writers for centuries. It's time to tell the old tales once more. Thank you so much for taking time to watch our video. I'm Rebecca Reynolds and I did the text rendering for Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. I'm so grateful to have had the time to focus for the past four years on this incredible text. I've learned so much and I'm sure there's still a lot for me to learn. This rich piece of literature is the sort that you could study every day for the rest of your life and still find new things in it. For those of you who have never read The Fairy Queen, I'm excited for you. You have great adventures ahead. Welcome to Fairyland. And I hope that what you read in these pages will inspire you as a creator and also as you go out into a dangerous world and live your own life. To everyone who's able to participate in the Kickstarter, thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping to bring this to life. At whatever capacity you're able to participate, I think it's a good work we're doing. So onward and upward. Here we go, the Fairy Queen. <laughs>